Good morning, all of you. And this is time that we discuss Doris Lessing, a postmodern British novelist. And she was also a poet, playwright, biographer, and story writer. And she also produced a series of science novels. And she was born in Persia, it was in Iran. And uh, she was brought up in southern Rhodesia. Right now it is called uh, Zimbabwe. And while staying there, she became a member of the Communist Party there. And after all, she returned to London and became a member of the British Communist Party. And in her final years, she left the communist ideology and joined with the Sufist movement, Sufi Islamic movement. She tended to become a Sufist. And after becoming an acclaimed writer, she wrote a few novels under the pen name Jain Somers. And she has got two novels written under the pen name Jain Somers. And they were autobiographical novels. And towards the end of her career, she adopted a pen name only for two of her novels. And she has produced about 50 works, and only for the two novels she used a pseudonym, Jane Somers. And very interestingly, she received a Nobel Prize in her old age. She received her Nobel Prize in her old age. It was in 2007. She received her Nobel Prize, and she was the one who received the Nobel Prize late in her career. Say, she was very old when she received the Nobel Prize and she seemed to be the oldest woman ever to receive the Nobel Prize. She was almost 80, 80 years old when she received the Nobel Prize. And she was the oldest woman ever to receive uh, the Nobel Prize. And uh, she married twice and her first marriage was with uh, Frank Charles Wisdom. And she lived with him for a brief period from 1939 to 1943. And from 1943 onwards, she joined with uh, Anton Nikolai Lessing. And it is from him the surname Lessing has been adopted. She got married with him in 1943 and continued to live with him only for five years. And she has got two children in her first relationship and uh, one child in her second relationship. And when we consider the, the life of uh, Doris Lessing, we come to find that there are basically three phases. The first phase is to be called the communist phase. When she was in Southern Rhodesia, she joined with uh, the communist uh, people there, spending her days with the communists. And she was interested in socialistic uh, ideology. And uh, the second phase is to be called the psychological phase. And the last phase is her Sufist uh, phase. And she came out with her first novel, The Grass is Singing. Actually, the title has been taken from T.S. Eliot's poem, Wasteland. It is in the last episode of the poem, and they tilled uh, what the thunder says. We come to find the tame used by T.S. Eliot, the grass is singing. And this is the name given for her first novel that was produced in 1950. Doris Lessing is mainly popular for her novel, The Golden Notebook, and it was produced by her in 1962. But her first novel, The Grassy Singing, came out in 1950. And the novel has been changed into a film entitled The Killing Heat, H-E-A-T, Heat. And the novel is set in Southern Rhodesia, and uh, it begins with a newspaper clipping. Actually, the novel begins with a newspaper clipping. A new news 
that appeared in the newspaper. And it, it speaks about the death of a white lady named Mary Turner. And in the news, it is alluded that she was murdered by her black servant Moses. So the novel begins with, with a clipping of a newspaper column. And in the newspaper, there was the news about the death of a white lady, the murder of a white lady by a Negro servant named Moses. And Doris Lessing goes to the depth of the story and how it happened and what were the circumstances that led to the murder of the white lady. And she comes to give the story that Moses, the servant who was alluded as killing the white lady, was a servant attached with the family of Mary, Mary Turner. Mary Turner was a white lady and she got married with a, a rich uh, estate owner named uh, Dick Turner and they started living together and they had a few servants at their estate and at their home. And Dick Turner was a very gentle man, very polished in his manners and he dealt to the servants in a very gentle manner. But when the responsibility of looking after the servants came to Mary. She seemed to treat the servants in a bad way. Most often she tried to torture the slaves there. And especially the slave named Moses was tortured by her quite often. She even used to whip them. And the, the servants underwent all the torture and they had their revenge in their mind, perhaps. And towards the end, uh, Mary became old and sick. And she could not even manage to change her dress and to take a bath. And by the time Moses had become the servant at the home, and it was uh, Moses who helped her to change her dress and to take shower. And it was he who fed the lady. And after all, the news item says that uh, she was murdered by Moses. And the reason why Moses murdered the lady was not clear. Anyhow, the dead body of the lady was found in the portico of her house. And there were the people burying on the death. And uh, Moses was also found standing at a distance. And he was there waiting for the police to come and to take him to the prison. And this is the story described in the novel, The Grass is Singing. And the title I told you has been taken from T.S. Eliot's poem, The Wasteland. And it is from the section, What the Thunder Said. And What the Thunder Said is the last section of the poem, The Wasteland. And Doris Lessing is mainly popular for her postmodern fiction entitled The Golden Notebook. And it has been regarded as an inner space uh, fiction. And the theme was made by Margaret Drabble. And we come to find another popular novelist uh, and literary critic named uh, Margaret uh, Drabble. And she produced the Oxford Companion to English Literature. And in that book, she developed the team Inner Space Fiction. And the novel, The Golden Notebook, can be tamed as an inner space uh, fiction. And the book also contains an anti-war and anti-Stalinist message. And the novel is to be called uh, Doris Lessing's breakthrough novel and it can also be regarded as a feminist uh, classic and very interestingly the novel contains other novels also the novel contains other novels also 
and there are uh, five parts to the novel and each part is divided again into two parts so there are five parts totally 10 sections are there in the novel each part has been again subdivided into two parts and there are five parts and 10 sections and it is a novel with a uh, 640 pages in length it's a novel with a uh, 640 pages in length and written in the postmodern surrealistic uh, genre and it is aimed as an inner space uh, fiction and the protagonist of the novel is named uh, anna ulf and he is once asked the question the protagonist of the novel the golden notebook and everyone who has got some idea about the golden notebook knows that it is anna ulf a writer of novels a literary person anna freeman ulf and she has produced a novel and the novel has become popular she has produced the, her first novel frontiers of war actually the novel speaks about the second world war also there are various things connected with the second world war it was at the time of the second world war doris lessing was in southern rhodesia it was in 1939 anna was found staying in southern rhodesia and she joined with the leftist movement there and she fell in love with a man also named max ulf and in 1945 they decided to marry they started living together and he was also a communist and a writer and finally married him in 1945 and in the next year she delivered a daughter and uh, the daughter was named uh, janet and the child was born in the next year say in 1946 and within a short time they became divorced and anna came to london and started to settle there and in 1951 she published her novel frontiers of war so this is a thing that we have to remember before we enter into the content of the novel there are a few things that we have to remember before we get into the novel actually anna was there in rhodesia in 1939 at the time when the second world war started second world war started in 1938 and she was there in zimbabwe and she was part of a communist movement there and these people used to spend their time in a hotel called mashopi hotel mashopi and there were the communist friends like uh, paul ted and uh, billy and there was also a lady named may rose and they were all there in the sadeed rodesia's communist uh, movement and it was at the time anna freeman she was originally named anna freeman she fell into love with uh, max uh, ulf and the spelling of ulf is w u l f not the spelling of ulf in virginia ulf virginia ulf also got married with uh, leonard ulf and she is called virginia ulf and the spelling is w w o l f and here the spelling is w u l f she fell in love with a man named uh, max uh, ulf and they got married in 1945 and she became the mother of a daughter named janet and within a short time they became separated 
and by the time she was uh, producing a novel and the novel was published in 1951 and the novel became a success and it was titled frontiers of war and this is the thing that we have to remember before we embark on the novel the golden notebook so when we embark on the novel the golden notebook we come to find that it is another novel and it is called the free women and this is the other novel that anna has been planning to write and this is the other novel the free women so it was the novel that she was planning to write and she actually started writing the preamble of the story and uh, this novel actually describes the story of anna at present anna has been in london and she has got her daughter janet and janet is away studying in a boarding school and in london she has a very close friend named molly jacob and molly is also a diversity lady and her husband is richard and she also has got a son named tommy a young man molly and anna ulf are fast friends very close friends and this is the story described in the novel the free women and it is the beginning of the novel the free women actually anna ulf was inspired to write the novel free women by her present lover named saul green it is her present lover saul green who had asked her to write a novel not to stop with her first novel but to write one more novel that she has the talent to write novel and if she has uh, the talent to write the novel she should have to write the novel of her own life of her friendship with uh, molly and it was uh, saul green who suggested her to write a novel and to begin with uh, the two friends chatting and therefore in the novel the golden notebook we come to find the year is 1957 and uh, anna freeman ulf is there at the apartment of molly molly jacob and molly jacob has gone to meet some people and she is supposed to come in a short time and molly jacob is almost of the same age of anna and she is a film actress playing minor roles in the films and she is lean and beautiful also and uh, she also has been looking for a second marriage and her marriage with uh, mr richard has been so broken years before the marriage uh, with uh, richard was broken but they still continue to communicate and richard uh, got married with another lady also he got married with another lady named marian m a r i o n and she also plays a few role some important uh, role in the novel also we come to find her marian also here in the novel and richard uh, has been a businessman and in the habit of making sexual relations with his secretaries and he got married with one of his secretaries named marian and marian has been a lady with a drinking problem and she is a sardonic drunkard in the habit of drinking too much 
and there are problems in the life of Richard also. And when the novel opens, we come to find Anna Wolf waiting for Molly. And in the meantime, Richard comes there. Richard comes, in fact, to have uh, some discussion with uh, Molly. And Richard's and Molly's uh, son, Tommy, is brought up by Molly. Tommy has become a grown up man. But Tommy is an introvert, not interested in going out of his home and communicating with friends. And he is found sitting all the time in the house, not looking for a job and not trying to continue his education. And he has been staying in the house uh, as an introvert and in fact uh, Richard wants his son to be sent for some job. He wants Tommy to join some fame or to continue his education. And it is with this intention to make some arrangement for Tommy to join some fame or to continue his education, Richard visits uh, the house. And when Richard visits the house, Anna is there and Richard engages in a conversation with Anna and uh, Tommy also comes down from the upstairs. He comes down and he also engages in conversation and she is not happy with his father and he uh, actually quarrels with his father and also he refers to Anna's way of writing novels. And in the opening section of the novel itself, we come to find that there is reference that Anna has been pursuing a career as a novelist. And Tommy refers to it. And Tommy returns and Richard also returns from the house. And when Richard leaves, Molly comes and Anna tells Molly about the visit of Richard and about his plan of taking Tommy with him and about the scene that Tommy created when Richard was there and about uh, Richard's uh, so comments on his uh, secretaries and uh, he also expressed, Richard very interestingly expressed his desire to possess Anna also and Richard very interestingly expressed his desire to possess Anna also but Anna simply evaded giving any answer and these all are the things that take place in the opening part 